Because there was a movement out there that made him do it. You can have a crappy president. If you got a strong movement, you can get the job done.
hope and change. The movement for hope and change was not invented nor created by Barack Obama. Amen. He would tell you that. But we erase our own history. You know why? Low self esteem. Yeah.
That's the power of this movement. And it was only when we sat down that things went back to where they were. And now it's time for us to stand back up. So let me show you something. Let me show, 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 let me show, show you my slide. Now look, y'all know I worked in the White House for six months, best six months of my life, followed by the worst two weeks. Okay? Uh, after that, I took some time off, I taught at Princeton, and I got a chance to really think for the first time, and when not having to run an organization, some of y'all might want to try this. Not having to run an organization or a campaign or anything like that, uh, I was able to really think, and I thought about what happened to our movement. And I read about it, and I read about the Tea Party, and I discovered something I want to share with you, and that's the basis of why you're here. I think we can take this whole thing back and do it bigger and better than we did in 2008. That's my problem. We can take this whole thing back and do it bigger and better with more resilience than 2008. Now, what we do the first time, now you know how our movements have been. We call these silos. Uh, everybody in their own little cause and camps. Now, look, I didn't include everybody. Uh, if, if I had a longer slide, I would have. Don't get me, don't come up to me. What about, I know it's just a representative. We're a representative slice of our movement. But we were all divided from each other. Then along came, under the right conditions, Obama. And he created what I call a mentor branch. He wasn't, Obama didn't just mean a uh, cute black guy from Chicago trying to be president in 2008. Obama meant something bigger. It was a brand that meant hope and aspirations and all the good stuff. And when that meta brand hit, and it was a patriotic meta brand, he was saying, we don't have any red states, no blue states, we're the United States. And, and he talked about, he brought, he brought patriotism back to our cause. And so here's what we all did. Now look, this special effect cost me 200 bucks. <laughs> so y'all better appreciate this. All right, so, okay, then here we go back. So he was amazing. And then, when he put that man right up there, we all affiliated to him. Steal a minute. 
<laughs> and said, I'd like to speak to the president of the Tea Party. There is no headquarters. There is no headquarters. There is no receptionist. There is no mint. There is no president. There is no Tea Party. The Tea Party is an open source brand that 3,528 affiliates use, none of them own. They went to all these groups. Most of these groups pre-existed, just like your groups do. Most of these groups pre-existed the Tea Party. Some of them go all the way back to the Ross Perot days. They got new about Tea Party. But they said to them, we studied the Obama phenomenon. We studied the Civil Rights Movement. And we know how to do this now. We've got to steal their technology. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell you, keep your name, keep your website, keep everything you ever had. Just put behind your name a comma, Tea Party Affiliate. And then we're all going to move at the same time. We're all going to affiliate at the same time. And boom, the whole world's got to pay attention. But this is an upgrade over what we did. Let me show you why. They branded not a person but a network. They didn't brand an individual. They branded a network. And they didn't base it on a single party. They based it on principles. In other words, they built a starfish and not a spider. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. The rest of you, you can search engine. This is an upgrade. This is an upgrade. We have to go back and reclaim our commitment to being the most innovative and cutting edge movement in the country. That's how we got here. It's time for us to innovate again and steal this technology. How do we do it? Very simple. When our guy got to become head of state, now this is going to cost 50 bucks in the store we're looking at. When our guy got to become head of state, he got promoted. Good for him. But here we are, and it's worse than before, because we, it's one thing not to have a house. It's something else to have a mansion, like we had in 2008, and then not have a house. To have been together, and now to be apart. Meanwhile, our opponents were apart, now they're together. That sucks, man. Do y'all like that? Do you like how it feels? No. Well, then I think it's time for us to do something about it. It's time for us to do something about it. Quit just blogging about it. Right? I, 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 I blog too. But, you know, it, it feels real good. And not only do I blog, now I, I pour a fan and stuff. Because I tweet. <laughs> My thumb be so tired. Complaining. <laughs> we can blog and tweet. But what if we actually did something? What if we actually acted on what we know? What if we went back to being the kind of movement we were before we had the great victory? Well, first of all, we would need to have some principle. Yeah. And I, I want to suggest something that first might strike you as all. But I think the principle, Obama founded this movement on a patriotic principle of e pluribus lunum, no red states, no blue states. We're all in this together. And it worked. The Tea Party is founded theirs on a patriotic principle of liberty. That's what they say they're about liberty. No, it's not liberty and justice for all. <laughs> we'll get back to that. But liberty and that works. Well, I think it's time for us to remember that the other side, not the only people I love, are not only on loving this country. In fact, the people who love this country and everybody in it are deeper patriots than they could ever hope to be. <laughs> so what if we had a principle? We need to be patriotic. We need to be portable. You can't just have a principle that you like in birth. I can talk about the Bay Area too. I, 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 we, we can't just have a, a principle that'll work in birth. And say you're going to be the national movement.
you've got to be important. You got to be able to take this principle in the red states. You got to be able to go into the laundromat somewhere in a red state and start talking to people and have people understand exactly who you are and what you mean. You got to be positive. So I don't want to be positive anymore. I'm so outraged, I just don't know what to do. I'll never be aspirational again. Call your grandmother. Get some perspective. American progressive movements have been through tougher times than this, and we never surrendered our country. To keep striving to make this country great. You think it was easy? But Dr. King and the suffragettes, we've had, I'm sorry, I, they, they got some cover spray. I haven't seen no lynching ropes and dogs yet. And tougher enemies. And tougher enemies. And we never surrendered our principles. So it's got to be patriotic. It's got to be portable. And it's got to be positive. Well, there is a principle like that. Dr. King talked about it. He said, first thing he said, where's Jay Mom? That's my brother right there. I love you. Jay and I used to watch these speeches when we were young. He said, uh, first thing he said, I have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. It's the first thing he said. He wasn't talking about consumerism. He wasn't talking about commercialism or individualism. He wasn't talking about what the commercializers did to the American dream. He wasn't talking about the American fantasy that everybody's going to be rich. You just, just buy a bunch of things and you're going to be happy. Just, just get a big enough flat screen TV and you can cover up the holes in your life. Now that's the American fantasy which led to an American nightmare. We're opposed to that. We're opposed to that. That wasn't that thing we're talking about. talking about something much deeper and much more fundamental. It's talking about the idea that we're all supposed to count. We're all supposed to matter. And in this one little country, no matter what your color or your race or your religion or your sexuality or your gender, you're supposed to be able to, to work hard and get something. You're supposed to be able to have the dignity of work and opportunities you can Look at those children in your household and know that they might, if they work hard to get farther than you did. That's supposed to be who we are. And that promise brought people from all around the world. And those of us who really didn't choose to come here, we chose to stay to make good on that promise. It shouldn't be thrown under the bus just for a corporation that I pay their tax on the car.
every spring into no jobs, praying to get an unpaid internship for two years. Let them be able to stand under a common banner and say, I want to fight to make sure that I get a chance to have my American dreams come true. Let our everyday heroes, the cops, the teachers, the firefighters, the nurses, the postal workers, the librarians, the backbone of our community. Now we have the opportunity. And 
I say we, I mean we, I don't mean me. The great thing I learned from the tea party is I moved to my clothes. They're very, very adult about charisma and leadership. Gotta give them credit for this. Who is the one leader of the tea party? Who is the one leader? They used to have Sarah Palin. She was the queen of the Tea Party. She fell down the stairway of public opinion. The tea Party's strong as ever. They used to have my good friend Glenn Beck on TV. Remember him? <laughs> haven't, haven't heard much from Glenn Beck recently. Don't even have a show. But the Tea Party's as strong as ever. In fact, if Michelle Bachman, Sarah Palin, Glenn Beck, and all, Jake Arnold all came here today and said, the Tea Party, is over. It wouldn't be over. Because they use their charismatic leaders to build something bigger than any leader. This is our opportunity. The other thing about the Tea Party is they talk rugged individualism, but they act collectively. They talk rugged individualism. You got a problem? Better solve it yourself. You don't need to go. Just be more rugged and more individual. That's how they talk. But they have enacted the most collectivist strategy for taking power in the history of the Republic. 3,528 groups sharing a brand nobody owns. 50,000 people cooperating on a wiki to come up with the agenda that nobody wrote. They talk individual and act collectively and we Washington, D.C. crowd 
do the best they could without us. Help us on the way.
Republic of Country, fighting for an economy that works for all of us, and we are allies of the American Dream Movement. My name is David Zoltz, I'm the campaign director of the Center for Community Change. We are and I'm with the Opportunity Agenda. We represent thousands of activists, artists, and cultural organizers who are helping to shape the American Dream Movement. and candidate project. We're working with partners to recruit more than 2,000 progressives to run for local office right now. This year, we're going to be building a delegation of candidates for the American Dream Movement. Uh, I'm Courtney Height. I'm co-director of the Energy Action Coalition. Uh, as the hub of the new climate movement, we are creating a power shift, and we are the American Dream Movement. on civil and human rights, the country's biggest, baddest, and oldest civil and human rights coalition. And we are the American Dream Movement.
create good jobs, cut wasteful Pentagon spending, and together we will build the American dream. Thank you. 